everybody. Welcome back to chemistry. If I can blow up the slide. So the problem reads as follows. Many free radicals combine to form molecules that do not contain any unpaired electrons. The driving force for the radical-radical combination reaction is the formation of a new electron pair bond. Then it says, consider the formation of hydrogen peroxide. And so what I'm hoping you can sort of see is that you have two hydroxyls reacting to form hydrogen peroxide. And it says, write Lewis formulas for the reactant and product species in the chemical equation, including non-bonding electrons. And also, let me just point out, you may have that problem or you might have this problem. It's the same setup, but it's a different equation. This time you're reacting nitrogen with nitrogen oxide uh, to produce that compound, um, N2O. So I'll start with the first one and I'll talk a little bit about it. So can I lower the slide? Okay, so the first thing I kind of need to mention is this problem is a little unusual. So let me just start out by writing out the balanced equation here. 2OH gives you H2O2. So there are a number of things that are new. So one thing I want to point out that's very important is you might think this is hydroxide ion. So let me show you what the equation would look like if it was hydroxide ion. If it was hydroxide ion, there would be a negative charge here. And it's so in this equation, there is no negative charge. So this is not hydroxide ion. This is something called hydroxide radical. And I'll explain why that's called a radical in a minute. And then notice that we're not dealing with water here. We're dealing with a hydrogen oxygen compound that has a slightly different formula, which is H2O2. And so this is called hydrogen peroxide. And so what they want in this problem is for you to write out correct Lewis structures for the hydroxyl radical and the hydrogen peroxide. So let me go ahead and go through this process. So what I want to first do is write out a Lewis structure for the hydroxyl radical. And so even though in this equation it says 2OH, I'm going to do a Lewis structure for now for just one of the OHs. So Forget about that two right now. Let's just figure out a Lewis structure for 1OH. And so here we go. And so we have oxygen here. And oxygen has six valence electrons. So we have hydrogen here. And it has one valence electron. So here we have seven valence electrons. So this is a little different. We're dealing with a molecule that does not have an even number of electrons. It's an odd number of electrons. So Let's go ahead and still try to draw a Lewis structure for this. So you can think of seven electrons as three pairs, which is six, plus one extra electron. Okay, so here is oxygen in the hydroxyl radical, and here is hydrogen. And so three pairs of one electron, and so we're going to use the first pair to bond oxygen and hydrogen. We have two more pairs and electrons. So here is another pair. Here is another pair. And so we now have three pairs. And so the question is, where does this extra one electron go? Well, hydrogen can only ever have two electrons associated with it. On the other hand, oxygen and other elements rarely, but occasionally, <laughs> rarely have a not so much an octet, but maybe they're going to be missing one electron. And so that's the case here. So instead of having eight electrons associated with oxygen, we're going to put this one electron here. So we have seven electrons associated with oxygen. So this is an unusual species of hydroxide in that instead of having a total of an octet here, you are missing one electron. When you have a molecule that has one or more single electrons that are not paired up, that species is called a radical. So this is called a hydroxyl radical. So let me go ahead and write out the Lewis structure for hydrogen peroxide. And so you do the calculation like you would do before. There are six electrons here, and a two for 12 total. And then hydrogen, um, we have one electron times two is two, 
And so we have a total of 14 electrons or seven pairs. Okay, so we can set up a skeletal structure. So oxygen, oxygen will be in the center, hydrogen's on the sides. So seven pairs, first pair connects this hydrogen with this oxygen, second pair of these two oxygens together, third pair here, four, five, six, and seven. So hydrogen peroxide is pretty much a normal Lewis structure. So let me kind of go back and talk about the point about this problem that they want you to see. So what they want you to see is this. So you see this hydroxyl radical here? It can react with another one. So here is the other one here, and let me draw its Lewis structure. And what will happen is these two hydroxyl radicals will stick together like this. And so they do end up forming hydrogen peroxide. So this is a free radical reaction forming sort of a normal molecule, which is hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. This next one's a little bit more difficult. Okay, so this time we're dealing with another reaction. It's nitrogen plus NO gives you NNO. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw Lewis structures for all these molecules. So we just have a nitrogen atom here, and nitrogen has five valence electrons. So there's five valence electrons, and so what they want you to do is just draw the Lewis structure for nitrogen like this. So it has three unpaired electrons, so it, it, the nitrogen atom can be considered a radical. And then what we have is nitrogen oxide, so nitrogen is five electrons, oxygen is six electrons. So we have a total of 11 electrons here, so this is gonna be five pairs plus one electron. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier to write a good Lewis structure for nitrogen oxide. So we start out with a nitrogen there, an oxygen there, and this is one pair. So we have four pairs left plus an extra electron. So let me go ahead and put in the other four pairs. One, two, three, four. Okay. So this is a little bit challenging. You have to figure out which atom gets the single electron. So before we do that, what I want to do is I want to make sure that as many atoms in this molecule have as octets as they possibly can have. And I think you can see right now that nitrogen here has six electrons and oxygen here has six electrons. And you might remember all elements in the second period must have an octet of electrons. And so you may know of a way in which you get an octet. So one way is you can take one of nitrogen's lone pairs and stick it and make it form a bond between nitrogen and oxygen. Um, that's one possibility. Or another possibility is you can have this pair from oxygen and you can have it stick in the bond here between nitrogen and oxygen. Um, so let's go ahead and look at these things and see if there's an improvement here. So there are two ways to do this again. So let me draw this out like this again. Okay, so with this structure here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the nitrogen pair like this, and then we'll talk about this in a minute. Okay, and then this structure, I'm going to have the oxygen pair form the bond. And so we get this. Okay, and just to make this a little bit prettier, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this pair of electrons here to the end like this, and then move this pair of electrons here to the end like that. Okay, so the problem is this. Our correct Lewis structure must have a total of 11 electrons, and both of these structures have 10, so we have to add um, one more electron. So you cannot add an extra electron to the atom that has an octet. So you see this oxygen atom here? Um, this oxygen has an octet. You cannot put in an extra one to give it nine electrons. That's not allowed. However, this nitrogen here 
has not an octet, it has six electrons. So we, if we wanted to in this structure, we can put the extra electron in nitrogen like that. Here with this structure, kind of the same deal but opposite atoms. The nitrogen in this structure here um, has an octet. We cannot give it an additional electron to give it nine electrons, that's not allowed. But the oxygen here, as you can see, has six electrons and it can accept one more electron. So the question is this, we have two structures, A and B. Is there one that is preferred over the other? So one rule you may learn about if you take inorganic chemistry is this. Pairs of electrons prefer to be on more electronegative atoms, which means if you have single electrons, they might be more readily found on less electronegative atoms. And so here um, with structure B, we have pairs of electrons mostly on the least electronegative atom, and then the more electronegative atom, which is oxygen, only has one pair of electrons and a single electron. So that's not so good. But in structure A, we have the most pairs of electrons around the most electronegative atom, which is oxygen, and then the single electron goes into the less electronegative atom. So here, this is really the correct Lewis structure. Okay, so let's figure out the final Lewis structure. So we have two nitrogens, so we have five electrons times two is 10 electrons. We have oxygen with six electrons, so it's six. So we have a total of 16 electrons or eight pairs. So it might look like this, N, N, O, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you can see that a problem here is, although the central nitrogen here has an octet, the nitrogen on the left and the oxygen on the right do not have octets, and this can be solved by moving this pair here and that pair there, and so you should get this. And so this is the correct Lewis structure for N2O. Okay, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.